Hey everyone, Scott Keys from S Keys Images and Wildlife Inspired for the love of God, bird photographers. Please stop doing this. Please, I beg you. This has been a pet peeve for years and it's something I'm going to talk about today a little bit maybe to, to help people, to maybe encourage new people not to attempt this. And if you've done it in the past, find the images you posted. You're a better photographer than this delete them, delete them from Facebook. Let me show you what I'm talking about. The sky replacement. We can't do this anymore, guys. Photoshop has made it easier and easier. They've added a sky replacement button. It is a, a almost a one click change. And I'm going to tell you a quick story on Facebook. A couple years ago, uh, somebody had done a sky replacement similar to this, a Raptor on a background. And I, in the comments, I, I captioned like, Hey, you know, is this a composite? And they said, no. And I thought, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll politely remind the guy it's, it's good etiquette when you do a composite to let the, the audience know the viewing audience know, but he, then he said, no. And now I was thinking that's not possible. A friend of mine, who's actually a friend now. And at the time, this is how we met commented me and said, yeah, good luck denying this one. And he sends me a picture of the same bird from a couple years ago from the same photographer's account. So he must have had one archived somewhere. And it's just, it literally the exact same images. One with a blue sky, one with a sky. I'm not going to tell you it looked exactly like this, but something like this. Something that looked, to me, pretty hokey. Um, interestingly enough, the, this, this person defended it and, and actually said, I'm going to hire a lawyer. And if you continue to, to comment in my images, I'll sue you for defamation. To which I replied, defamation is only for false statements. And here's the two images that I'm, I'm talking about, at which point he just blocked me and I never heard from him again. But the point is, not only do people do this, but they deny it. And so a little bit, just real quick on digital manipulation, because I, I don't want to come off as a purist or holier than thou. I manipulate images all the time. Uh, typically for me, I, I work within the pixels that I, that are provided in the image. So I can stretch it out. I can shrink it. I can move things around a little bit for better composition. I'll clone out sticks. I'll do all of that. And I fully disclose that. So if somebody asks now, I don't feel the need ever to explain the processes that I use or give detailed explanations. It's kind of like a magician, uh, with di digital manipulation. I'm going to do a video on this in a little more detail, but I'll give you kind of the, the gist of the way I feel. If a magician tells you he's doing a trick, I don't think he has to tell you how he's doing it. If somebody claims they're performing miracles for money, to me, that's deceptive. That's, that's ethically, that's wrong. When you say, I'm going to perform these miracles and I have superpowers. So give me money because I'm, I'm not a magician. I am uh, spiritual. I think that's wrong. Uh, but if somebody tells me, hey, I'm a magician, here's the trick. I'm fooling you. I don't think they have to tell me how. I think it's kind of neat that they can they, they can create that. Those are kind of the guiding principles I use with digital manipulation. Now, the problem I have with sky replacement is most of the time it just looks awful. It just, it, it can't happen. To achieve this look, uh, wildlife photographers, typically we're using 400 to 600 millimeters or more with teleconverters. And because of that, you get a lot of compression. So the, the backgrounds are very squeezed in. You get a good bokeh. We like out of focus typically. So you can't achieve this sky with a 600 millimeter lens. It, it, you can't do it. Could you do it with a 22 millimeter lens? Well, if the this Sharpshin Hawk flew within a foot of the lens, you might be able to achieve it, but that's not real likely. So these, these things just don't happen. And not only that, but a lot of times the lighting is off. You can see in this image, for example, the light, the, the direction of the light doesn't match where it's hitting the bird. So that's a mistake that people make. So it's just not, usually it's done very, very poorly and it's not realistic. However, audiences, especially on Facebook, Facebook seems to love this stuff. They don't know any better. So what they see is a pretty image uh, with a, with a, with a bird and a pretty sky. This is the image out of camera and Facebook allowed me the opportunity within, I don't know, 10 seconds to create an image that looked like this a couple buttons. I, I mean, it's literally right up at the top. I'll, I'll change my screen a little bit here. And, and show you where it's at. But right up at the top here under edit, I, I really shouldn't tell people where to find this because it's going to encourage it. But there it is, sky replacement. I'm sure a lot of people know it's already there. You've seen it on Facebook. Uh, so first of all, it is am I the only one that this is a pet peeve? It, it really is a pet peeve. I re, it, it really just, it just irks me. I, I just, I think it looks so unnatural. 
So is it just me or am I being, am I just being Scott? Am I being too, too critical, too cynical? Now, there are ways I think you can do, if you choose, I'm not telling people to do it, but if you choose to add a little life to your images, let me show you this. Now, this is a, an awful image. Uh, again, it can't happen. You can't get 400, 600 millimeter lens to shoot this indigo bunting. Let me show you what it looks like out of camera. This is the out of camera. Good look, eye level. I like the composition. The, the curve of the head matches the curve of the flower. It, it's, it's, a, it's a nice image. It's not like award-winning, but it's nice. I use this as an example, by the way, on a Patreon video that I made, encouraging people, again, not to do the practice, but then showing them some trip, some tick, tri some tips and tricks to, uh, to actually edit skies so that they can look natural using sky replacement. Now, I will tell you this. Patreon is a subscription site. I do, the advice here is all free. Uh, it's my light advice. It's my light education. For the real stuff, I would ask people to go over and check out Patreon. I'll put some information down in the caption that you can you can go right to it. Um, but there I have videos that teach you how to do these very subtle techniques. And um, there's a lot of videos. It's $8 a month. You get like 100 videos right off the bat. I mean, it really is an unparalleled value for that price. Let's get back to this image and let me show you what it would look like using that, that one click Photoshop button. There it is. Now there are ways. And what I did is took this, uh, in my Patreon video, I, I kind of showed a, a way to make this look pretty reasonable. And this was my end of product. Now it doesn't look, it doesn't look edited really. It looks very, very, very natural. And if you compare it to the original, it holds the integrity. Just look at the, the sky though, how there's some soft clouds. And this is what in my head, if there were soft clouds in the background, this is what they would have looked like that day. Now, I, I don't personally think I would do this, um, but if somebody did this, at least it feels natural. It, it feels like a sky that could happen. Not like that, not like that heavy, not this, please guys, not this. So anyway, um, if you're interested in stuff like this, these little video editing techniques where I actually break down the whole thing, check out my Patreon site, but, but for the love of God, can we just stop with the sky replacement and down in the comments, is it just me? Am I being, am I being overly critical? Am I being hypersensitive about this? Should I just not care about it? But I do have some pet peeves that get under my skin <laughs> in these sky replacements that get sometimes hundreds and thousands of, of likes and encourage people to do it because people are, you know, it feeds this, this uh, feedback loop of, of reinforcement, this positive reinforcement. Can we just stop it? please. All right. That's the advice I have for you today. New photographers, don't do this. Experienced photographers, if you ever did this in the past, dig in your archives, delete it all and try to make it more natural. Uh, for the audience watching this video, let me know down in the comments what you think. Thanks for your continued support with the channel. And as always, I hope we can continue to find inspiration in wildlife together.